Mark 12, the story of the writers. Jesus began to speak to the people by using stories. He said, a man planted a vineyard. He put a wall around it. He dug a pit for, for a wine press. He also built a lookout tower. He rented the vineyard out to some farmers. Then he went away on a journey. At harvest time, he went sent a servant to the renters. He told the servant to collect from them some of the fruit of the vineyard, but they grabbed the servant and beat him up. Then they sent him away with nothing. So the man sent another servant to the renters. They hit this one on the head and threat- treated him badly. The ma- man sent still another another servant. The renters killed him. The man sent many others. The renters beat up some of them. They killed the others. The man had one person left to send. It was his son, and he loved him. He sent him last of all. He said, they will respect my son. But the renters said to each other, this is the one who will receive all the owner's property someday. Come, let's kill him. Then everything will be ours. So they took him and killed him. They threw him out of the vineyard. What will the owner of the vineyard do then? He will come and kill the renters. He will give the vineyard to the to others. Haven't you read what the scripture says? The stone the builders didn't accept has become the most important stone of all. The, this Lord ha- has done it. It is wonderful in our eyes. Psalms chapter 118 verse 22 to verse 23. Then the religious leaders looked for a way to arrest Jesus. They knew he had told the story against them, but they were afraid of the crowd. So they left him and went away. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar? Later, the religious leaders sent some of the Pharisees and Herodians to Jesus. They wanted to trap him with his own words. They came to us and said, Teacher, we know you are a man of honor. You don't let others tell you what to do or say. You don't care how important they are, but you teach the way of God truthfully. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Should we pay or should, shouldn't we? But Jesus knew what they were trying to do, so he asked, Why are you trying to trap me? But bring me a silver coin and let me look at it. They brought the coin. He asked them, Whose picture is this and whose was Caesar's? They replied. Then Jesus said to them, Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and give to God what belongs to God. They were amazed at him. Marriage when the dead rise. The Sadducees came to Jesus with a question. They do not believe that people rose from the dead. Teacher, they said, Moses wrote for us about a man who died and didn't have any children. But he did leave a wife behind. That man's brother must get married to the widow. He must have children to carry on his dead brother's name. There were seven brothers. The first one got married. He died without leaving any children. The second one got married to the widow. He also died and left no child. It was the same with the third one. In fact, none of the seven left any children. Last of all, the woman died too. When the dead rose, whose wife should be? In the dead rose, whose wife will she be? All seven of them were married to her. Jesus replied, You are mistaken because you do not know the scriptures, and you do not know the power of God. When the dead rise, they won't get married, and their parents won't give them to be married. They will be like the angels in heaven. What well, about the dead rising? Haven't you read in the scroll of Moses the story of the bush? God says to Moses, I am the God of Abraham, I am the God of Isaac, and I am the God of Jacob. Exodus chapter 3 verse 6. He is not a God of the dead. He is the God of the living. You have made a being mistake. The most important commandment. One of the teachers of the law came and heard the Sadducees arguing. He noticed that Jesus has given the Sadducees a good answer. So he asked him, which is the most important of all the commandments? Jesus answered him. Here is the most important one, Moses said, Israel, listen to me, the Lord is a God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Love him with all your mind and with all your strength. Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4 and 5. And here is the second one, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18. There is no commandment more important than these. You have spoken well, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one. There is no other God but him. To love God with all your heart and 
mind and strength is very important. So loving your neighbor as you love yourself. These things are more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. Jesus saw that the man had answered wisely. He said to him, You are not far from God's kingdom. From then on, no one dared dare to ask Jesus any more questions. Whose son is Christ? Jesus was teaching in the temple courtyard. He asked, Why do the teachers of the law say that the Christ is the son of David? The Holy Spirit speaks through David himself. David said, The Lord said to my Lord, He Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your control. Psalms chapter 110 verse 1. David himself calls him Lord. So how can be David's son? The Lord cried and listened to Jesus with delight. As he taught, he said, Watch out for the teachers of the law. They like to walk around in long robes. They like to be greeted in the marketplaces. They love to have the most important seats in the synagogues. They also love to have places of honor at dinners. They take over the houses of widows. They say long prayers to show off. God will punish those men very much. The widow's offering. Jesus sat down across from the place where people put the temple offerings. He watched the crowd putting their money into the offering boxes. Many rich people threw large amounts into them, but a poor widow came, came and put in two very small copper coins. They were worth much less than a penny. Jesus asked his disciples to come to him. He said, What well, I'm about to tell you is true. The poor widow has put more into the offering box than all the others. They all gave a lot because they are rich. Hey. They all gave a lot because they are rich. But she gave even though she was poor. She put in everything she had. She gave all she had lived on. Mark chapter 13. Signs of the end. Jesus was leaving the temple. One of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what huge stones, what wonderful buildings. Do you see these huge buildings? Jesus asked. No one stone here will be left on the top of another. Every stone will be thrown down. Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, across from the temple. Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him a question in the prophet. Tell us, they said, when will these ha- things happen? And what will be the sign that they are all about to come true. Jesus said to them, Keep watch. Be careful that no one fools you. Many will come in my name. They will claim, I am here. They will fool many people. You will hear about wars. You will also hear people talking about future wars. Don't be alarmed. Those things must happen, but the end still isn't here. Nation will fight against nation. Kingdom will fight against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in many places. People will go hungry. All of those things are the beginning of earth's pains. Watch out, you will be handed over to the local courts. You will be whipped in the synagogues. You will stand in front of governors and kings because of me. In that way, you will, witnesses. You will be witnesses to them. The good news has to be preached to all nations before the end comes. You will be arrested and brought to trial. But don't worry ahead of time about what you will say. Just say what God brings to your mind at the time. It is not you speaking with the Holy Spirit. Brothers will hand over brothers to be killed. Fathers will hand over their children. Children will will rise up against their parents and have them to put to death. Everyone will hate you bigger than me, but the one who stands firm to the end will be saved. You will see the hate, hate thing that destroys Daniel chapter 9 verse 27, Daniel chapter 11 verse 31, chapter 12 verse 11. It will stand where it does not belong. The reader should understand this. Then those who are in Judea should escape to the mountains. No one on the roof should go down into his house to take anything out. No one in that field should go back to get his coat. How awful it will be in those days for pregnant women. How awful for nursing mothers. Pray that this will not happen in winter. Those days will be worse than any other others from the time God created the world until now, and there will never be an, any like them again. If the Lord had not cut their time short, no one would live. But because of God's chosen people, he has shortened it. At the time, someone may say to you, Look, he is the Christ, or look, there he is. Do not believe it. False Christs and false prophets will appear. They will do signs and miracles. They will try to fool God's chosen people if possible. Keep watch. I have told you everything ahead of time.
So in those days, there will be terrible suffering. After that, the scripture says, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not shine, the stars will fall from the sky, the heavenly bodies will be shaken. Isaiah chapter 13 verse 10, chapter 34 verse 4. At that time, people will see the Son of Man coming in clouds. He will come with great power and glory. He will send his angels. He will gather his chosen people for all four directions. He will bring them from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heavens. Learn a lesson from the fruit tree. As soon as the twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see those things happening, you know that the end is near. It is right at the door. What I'm about to tell you is true. The people living at that time will certainly not pass away until all those things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. The day and hour are not known. No one knows about the day or hour, not even angels in heaven now. The Son does not know, only the Father knows. Keep watch, stay awake. You do not know what when that time will come. It's like a man going away. He leaves his house and puts his servants in charge. Each one is given a task to do. He tells the one at the door to keep watch. So keep watch. You do not know when the owner of the house will come back. It may be in the evening or at midnight. It may be when the rooster crows, crows or are down. He may come suddenly. So do not let him find you sleeping. What I'm about to, what I say to you, I say to everyone. Watch.